What we're going to work on in this video is how to factor using the X method. Some people call it X factoring. Other people will call it bottoms up. Now, what this problem solves is a quadratic trinomial. Now, what that means is a polynomial of degree two, and there are three terms. The key requirement for this um, factoring technique is the first term has to be positive. So let's look at something, you know, with numbers that's less confusing. So this one has three terms. The first term is positive, so we can use this X method. Now, what we first want to do is we want to figure out what, figure out what A, B, and C are. A is the number that's in front of the X squared. We'll call it 3. B is the number that's in front of the X, so we'll call it 7. And C is the constant at the end. And for those of you who know how to use the quadratic formula, this a, b, and c are the same a, b's, and c's for the quadratic formula. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in this x format. Now, don't worry, it doesn't have to make sense. So we put b in the center, a, x on the bottom, in the on the sides, and then um, three times two, a times c on the bottom. Now, the beauty of this method is that it works every time and it, and it helps um, students who are not good with multiplication. The first thing we, we wanna ask ourselves is what numbers multiply to six? Okay, so uh, 1 times 6, that equals to 6. Uh, negative 1 times negative 6, that equals to 6. We also have 2 times 3, and negative 2 times negative 3. Each one of these multiply to become 6. Now, the next thing we do is we want to add these two numbers. So we get 1 plus 6 is 7. Negative one, um, negative 1 minus 6 is negative 7. 2 plus 3 is 5. And negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. And what we want to do is we want to find the sum that matches the top number up here. So what we're looking for is the two, num the two number combination that multiply to 6, but also add to 7, right? This matches that. So what's going to happen is that we're going to select this row right here. So we're going to put this number here and this number here, right? And then we'll simplify. So if you can, you simplify. This turns into 2 over x, and then we'll simplify this one also. Now, the reason why this is called bottoms up is that you write the you write the bottom term um, the bottom first, and then the numerator. Okay. So what we're saying is that 3x squared plus 7x plus 2 is equal to the bottom, and then the top, and again the bottom, and then the top. Now, even though none of this is very intuitive, it just works like magic. It works every time. If I try to foil this, this times this, we get 3x squared, and then this times this, we get plus x. And then this times this, I get 6x. And then this times this, I get plus 2. We'll see that when we, when we multiply these two binomials, we'll get 3x squared plus 7x plus 2. So the equality holds. So let's do a few more examples and a few more trick problems. So let's do this problem again. Okay. Uh, the first thing we want to do is find a, b, and c. So a is equal to 10, b is equal to negative 3, 
and c is equal to um, c is equal to negative one. And the next thing we'll do is we'll fill out our x. Okay, the x came from here, right? So remember that b is on top, a's are on the side, and a times c is on the bottom. Okay, b is on top. Ax is, oh, sorry, uh, make that a 10. Ax is on the side, and then a times c is on the bottom. 10 times negative 1, it, um, 10 times negative 1 is negative 10. So we want all the factors of negative 10. We want all the numbers that multiply to that value. So we'll get... Um, let's see, negative time times um, 1 and 10 times negative 1. We'll also get negative 2 times 5 and then positive 2 times negative 5. And then we want to add each of these numbers. All right, so if I add that and I add that, I get minus 9, 9. 3 minus 3. And I want to find which one of these rows match the minus 3. In this case, it will be this row right here. So then we'll put this, um, these two values here. And then we'll simplify. And we'll get negative 1 over 2x. And then we'll get 1 over 5x. Now, when you write your answer, remember that you start with the bottom and then you go up, bottoms up. So we'll go 5x plus 1, and then we'll go 2x minus 1. Okay. Now, let's look at sort of the different ways in which your uh, teacher can try to trick you. Now, whenever they give you a factor problem, the first thing you want to do is look, f look for a greatest common factor. So is there any number that divides into 9, 24, and 12? And the answer is 3. And we also um, can see that you can factor out uh, x. Uh, oops. 3x squared minus 8x plus 4. Now, what's going to happen is that this 3x is going to be part of your answer. It'll look something like this times that. But in terms of our calculation, we're now going to forget about it. We're just going to x-factor the interior. So first, let's find the a, b, and c. The a is going to be equal to 3. The b is going to be equal to negative 8. And the c is going to be equal to 4. And then when we put it in our x, we're going to put our b over here, our a times c over here, our ax over here, and our ax over there. So we'll get minus 8, um, 3x, 3x, and 3 times 4 is 12. Now, we don't have to do every one of these. We can sort of um, work on what multiplies uh, to become 12, but also adds to negative 8. And if we go through sort of every iteration of what multiplies to become 12, we can come up with uh, negative 6 and negative 2. So if I multiply these two, I get 12. And if I add these two, I get negative 8. We can see that this matches that and when we multiply these two we get 12. Now let's bring these two numbers up here and then let's simplify. Okay and then let's look at this and let's look at that. So remember that the um, bottom comes first and then the top, the bottom comes first, and then the top. 
Now, um, it doesn't matter what order you write these factors. If you want, you could write it like this. And you can write this answer like this. Okay. Now, remember that since 2 times 3 is equal to 6, it also holds that 3 times 2 is also to 6. It doesn't matter whether you say 2 times 3 or 3 times 2, you'll get the same number. Same thing will happen here. So either of these are the right answer and either of those are the right answer. Okay. So let's try this again. Before we try and factor, we always try to pull out the GCF. In this case, the GCF is going to be y. And then we'll go uh, 5x squared minus 9x minus 2. And as we said before, this y will be in our answer. And all we're doing now is x factoring the inside. I like to write it as soon as I find it because I find oftentimes when I do the x factoring, I forgot to I forget to write the GCF on the bottom. So let's x factor this. The minus nine goes on the bottom, the five x five x on the side, and five times negative two is negative ten. So I don't I want to find what two numbers multiply to negative ten but add to negative nine. So if I go through each of the iterations, one times 10, two times five, I can come up with negative 10 plus one. If I multiply these two numbers, I get negative 10. And if I add these two numbers, I'm gonna get negative nine. So this matches that. We'll then put these two numbers here and then we'll simplify it. Now we always write the bottom number first. And we're done. Okay. Now, this problem here looks almost like this problem. The difference is that this one does not have a GCF. See, the key thing over here is that when we look at the problem on the left, we see that every term has a Y. So that's why we pull it out as a GCF. The problem here is that we have a Y and then a Y squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the proper way to solve this using X factoring and then a quick little cheat that you can use on your test. Okay, now, if we go back to first principles, the A is everything except for the X squared. The B is everything except for the X. So it will be equal to minus 9X. And the C is equal to just everything there. Oh, I'm sorry, this should be a Y. Uh, minus 2y squared. So in our a, b, and c, we don't have any x's, but the y's remain. Now, let's fill out our x. This will be minus 9y. Uh, this will be 5x, and this will be 5x. And then this part over here will be um, um, negative 2y squared times 5. So let's write that down. we'll get minus 10y squared. So let's figure out what times what equals that, but adds to that. So we'll get minus 10y minus y. Now, when I multiply these two, I get this. And then when I add the, oops, B plus. When I multiply these two, I get that. When I add these two, I get that. So we can see that this matches this. Now, let's take these two values. And then let's simplify. Okay. 
Now, let's then um, do the bottom and then up. So we get x minus 2y, 5x uh, plus y. Now, the reason why I did these problems side by side is I want you to see that the coefficients are exactly the same. 5 minus 9 minus 2. Okay. Now, um, when we look at the answer, right, if we just ignore the GCF at this point, we can see that this and this are almost identical. The only difference is that we have this Y on the end. So if you were to factor, if we were to ignore the Y's and just factor 5X squared minus 9X minus 2, we could, we would then get x minus 2, 5x plus 1. You can see that that's what we did over here, if we ignore the GCF. And we could take into account the y, y squared portion, if we were to just add that y at the end. So a lot of times my students find it easier to just ignore the y's in this, in this problem, and at the end, just put it in at the end. And it works every time. So let's do a problem similar to what we just did. Now, if we try to factor out a GCF, we can see that the y, y squared is not a GCF. So let's use the same sort of cheat technique that we mentioned before. Let's ignore the y's. So we'll actually try to factor 3x squared plus 8x minus 3. I'm just ignoring the y's. And in the answer, so I don't forget, I'll remember to just put the y's there. So now when I factor this, we'll get 8 in the middle, 3x on the sides, and then over here we'll get 3 times negative 3, which becomes negative 9. Now I want to think of a number that multiplies to be number um, two numbers that multiply to become negative 9, but when you add them, become 8. So I'm thinking 9 minus 1, that works. 9 times minus 1 turns into minus 9, and if I add them, I get 8. So this 8 matches that 8, and we can bring the 9 and the minus 1 up here. Now let's simplify these. We'll get 3 over x, so you get x plus 3, and on this side you get 3x minus 1. Now, um, previously, um, when I first introduced, introduced x methods, um, I said that the first term had to be positive. Now, if the first term is negative, such, a, such as it is in this problem, what we want to do is factor out a negative 1. So let's pull out a negative 1 at the GCF. And what you see, um, what that does is that it flips the signs of each of the terms. So this is now positive, this is now positive, and this is now negative. Now, that negative 1 is part of our answer, but it's not part of our x factoring. We'll just bring it down in the answer so we don't forget. And let's x factor this. We'll get a 1 here, a 6x, and a 6x. And down here, we'll get 6 times negative 1, which is negative 6. Now, um, I want to find a number that multiplies to be negative 6, but adds to be 1. That would be 3 minus 2. I get a 1. This matches this. I'll put the 3 up here and the minus 2 over here. And what will happen is we'll get minus 1 over 3x on this side. And on this side, we'll get 1 over 2x. And then we'll put them down in our answer. 2x plus 1. And over here, 3x minus 1. Now, if you found this technique helpful, please like and subscribe so other people can find this video. Thank you.